Nebraska voters will head to the polls this weekend to vote in the Democratic caucus. But as those voters are considering which presidential candidate they'd like to represent their party, they should also be thinking about how that person's policies might affect their retirement planning. Joining us now to explain is Daryl Bryant. You see him there. He's the president of D. Bryant Retirement Strategies and host of Retirement Strategies Radio on KFAB right here in Omaha. And he joins us on the Morning Blend each Thursday. Daryl, it's good to have you back. Great to be here. Um, so according to, there's this 2015 poll by Charles Schwab. I know mm -hmm. you're familiar with it, but I want to catch our folks up at home on it. Sure. Um, nearly 9 in 10 Americans gave politicians a C grade or worse, yeah. hardly glowing uh, right. reviews of the work they're doing in Washington, D.C. But if we're thinking about the performance of our elected leaders mm -hmm. and then retirement planning, right. connect those worlds for us. Well, first of all, uh, you know, the, the question lately has been, should the Fed or our government uh, in general be involved in yet another area of financial planning mm -hmm. or retirement planning? Well. I think kind of yes and no. Uh, I don't like. I'd like to see as little government involvement as possible, of course, uh, or like a lot of us do. Um, however, the government is already involved uh, to the largest degree in our retirement planning, aren't they? How? Well, they they dictate when we can take from our IRAs post 59 and a half. They dictate um, uh, when we must take from our traditional IRA mm -hmm. stuff. You know, 70 and a half. They dictate when Social Security will be available, what the penalties for early withdrawal are, the taxes, et cetera. Taxes is where <laughs> I was thinking. Yeah. yeah. So they're very very, very uh, involved uh, in already in our retirement planning. I would probably caution viewers now, you might start hearing some chatter about uh, the government um, kind of picking on, uh, this is what I believe, mm -hmm. kind of picking on 401ks and we can do it better, et cetera. Uh, this is a little bit of some of the reading that I'm doing uh, currently. I'd probably try to uh, run from that, uh, you know, uh, in my personal opinion. I'd much rather keep that, uh, that area private yeah. and, and allow us to, uh, uh, to use our 401ks mm -hmm. and so forth, as opposed to having the government get involved yet again and manage, you know, that, that kind of sounds a lot like Social Security uh -huh. to me. And uh, we, know, we all know what's going on with Social Security and yeah. issues. Yeah, yeah. Well, it causes heartburn if you know, if you know yeah, what's going it does. on. It keeps it's, you up at night. It's confusing. Um, historically, how have elections affected retirement planning? Are there any trends that have surfaced? Oh, there. sure. Um, generally, um, the market will, our domestic market will move forward during mm -hmm. an election year. 13 of the past 16 uh, election cycles, the market has moved forward during that year of the election uh -huh. since World War II. So that, that's an interesting uh, uh, point. Uh, however, right now we do have um, other uh, overriding issues in the economy. So with regard to market timing uh, and so forth or positioning just because there, it's an election year, mm -hmm. I probably caution uh, viewers not to try to do that. Um, uh, we have uh, issues with oil, currently an oil surplus. We have China is has, having a, and their economy is having a ripple uh, effect across the world. Mm -hmm. uh, we're struggling with our own interest rates and, and uh, management there. So I think we can look forward to some volatility, uh, significant you know, really recognizable volatility over the next couple of years. So what, if anything, um, should, should we all be doing right now to stay on track in an election year? Um, well, as any, I think that it's, uh, I think we can set the election year off, you know, mm -hmm. uh, married to the back burner and just think in more general terms, uh, election year or no, it's really an important thing simply to take our retirement really, really Seriously, there's so many things that you can do to prepare, and we know that so few people have actually done any kind of math to determine to determine where they are in relationship mm -hmm. to a successful retirement. So uh, the first thing to do would be to schedule some time with somebody that you feel very, very comfortable with that is um, a person that specializes in your phase of life. It's if, if you're nearing retirement, then you want to speak with somebody who discusses Social Security and taxation, and Roths and non-Roths and, you know, rollovers and safer money management and reducing stress. And more important than anything else is to develop an income, what I call an income generating plan. That is so key, right? Well, yeah, because <laughs> you make the money and you don't just yeah. sit on it and then that's what you spend. Right. If you can continue to grow that even after you've retired, that right, that's where your trips come in. You're not sure. worrying about, oh, can I afford to eat out or not? Right. I mean, you know what you can do. Mm -hmm. But that's talk to me about the importance of visiting one-on-one -on -one with someone mm -hmm. who specializes in, in retirement the way you do instead of just like 
you know what I mean, like trying to go online and read about stuff sure. and then go it alone, but actually sitting down and coming up with a plan that's specific to you? Yeah, that is a great question. I think that what we see in our office more than anything else mm -hmm. when we do meet one-on-one -on -one, um, uh, with folks and we, we speak specifically about their situation, everyone has a different number, in other words, a different monthly bill that they're going to incur mm -hmm. when they retire. In other words, what does the whole thing cost for my lifestyle? So until we actually put together a plan that is specific to you, we're not going to see the stress level come down. Mm -hmm. And just because we get online, um, and I can go online and look up, you know, how to do a knee surgery, mm -hmm. but let's face it, you know, there's probably going to be a few things I didn't quite catch. Uh -huh. And so <laughs> I would <laughs> encourage people to, you know, work with a specialist who can uh, uh, collect the correct data, mm -hmm. right, and then turn around and uh, produce a report that will be uh, consistent with what you're mm -hmm. trying to accomplish. In other words, a retirement readiness report, yeah. right, and an income plan. And I think we'll, I know that we see that the stress level comes down. That's probably the oh. biggest benefit yeah. uh, about working with a specialist is now you know that you know where the income is coming from and, mm -hmm. you, and you can see that on paper. Well, and in fact, this is what we're talking about now um, in this visit with Daryl. You can schedule an appointment for that full retirement readiness report that is specific to you and your life and your stage. And Daryl helps people who are at or near retirement. So we joke, like, I don't know that I'm your client, but maybe in 20 <laughs> years, <laughs> you and I can talk a little more specifically about it. But um, if this is something where you feel like I've, I've earned the money, um, but now I'm ready to transition, give him a call. It's 402-932-2141. And then online, it's dbryantretirementstrategies.com. We'll link you back uh, to his site from ours as well. He's a true partner here at The Blend. And be sure to tune in each and every Thursday to our show uh, for more from Daryl. And then, of course, listen to him on weekends on KFAB so you can really learn about retiring successfully. That is the key. Daryl, it's nice to have you as always. Thank you so Thank much. You. Have a great day. And you too. We're back.